Belik Bedema. And I spell Kamla is spelled K O M L A. That is the Akan um, Kwabana. Akan, we say Kwabana. In ever we say Kamla. Kamla. Oh my God. One people, you know, just a little bit of variety. Kwamla Agbeli Bedema. Kwamla Agbeli is spelled A G B E L I. And Agbeli in the ever language means cassava. Oh my God. A K A Banchi. So, if he was born in the Akan areas, he would have been called Kwabna Banchi. My brother, my sister. Kwabna, uh, Kwabna Banchi Bedema. This is the show. Yabo, yabo. Brought to you by Mac Mag- Bansi. My brother, my sister, Kobla Agbele Bedema. Bedema is spelled G B E D E M A H. Was born on the 17th day of June in 1913. In fact, four years after Kwame Nkrumah was born. My brother, my sister, he lived long enough until the 11th day of July in 1998. He was a Ghanaian politician and a minister of finance. In fact, the very first minister of finance of this wonderful country in Kwame Nkrumah's government between 1954 and 1961. He was popularly known as Afro Bede because he was a man who spoke Pan-Africanism and he stood very firmly for the African cause. Kamala Agbeli Bedema came all the way from Anyaku in the Volta region of Ghana. How many of us know Anyaku? Put your hand if you know Anyaku. Okay, King Solomon AOF. Of course, I wasn't expecting you to put up your hand. Now, Anyaku is a town in the Volta region of Ghana. It is bordered at the south by the Keta Lagoon. Now, the inhabitants of the town mainly belong to the Ewe tribe. In fact, the Ewe ethnic group tracing its establishment to a settlement founded by the Anglos during the migration from Nochi in present-day Togo. This is Anyako in the African History Club. Kwabala Agbeli Bedema was born on the 17th day of June in 1913. But he was born in Wari. He was not born in Anyako, even though he came from Anyako. He was born in Wari, in Nigeria. So by birth, he was Nigerian as well. But he never took on his Nigerian identity. He ran with his Ghanaian identity. He was born in Wari, in Nigeria. He was of Ewe parentage. At a very young age, he loved to go to school. He went to school in Nigeria, yes. And when it was time to go to secondary school, he came all the way to the Gold Coast and went to Addis Ababa College in the Cape Coast area. My brother, my sister, for his secondary education from 1925 all the way to 1929. And then he left and went to Achimota School from 1929 to 1933. He became employed as a teacher at a school in the Equiapim district in the eastern region of Ghana. In fact, in 1939, six years after he had completed Achimota College, he became a science tutor. In those days, they were simply called masters. So a science master at the Accra Academy in Jamestown. Now, did you know that Accra Academy was in Jamestown? Did you know that? Did you know that it was originally in Jamestown? Now, Accra Academy is a non-denominational and uh, boarding boys' school. It is located at Bubuashi, near Kaneshi, in the greater Accra region now. But it used to be located right there inside Jamestown. My brother, my sister, alongside teaching, he engaged in the timber and confectionery businesses in 1943. He did the timber business. And he was also involved in confectionaries. You know what it means to say confectionary students? I'm talking about cakes. And I'm talking about uh, ball floats. What you call bow fruit. Ball fruit. Ball floats. Ball floats. That means balls that are floating on oil, right? And some other people call that breadfruit. Well, depending on what you want to say. My brother, my sister, bow fruit could also go through. Hear me now. Yes, this is interesting. 
Now in 1943, he decided to quit teaching. Yes, at Accra Academy. And he decided to do full-time timber trading. All along, my brother, my sister, this trade was booming. Remember people like Pa Grant were involved in that trade and they made so much wealth from out of the trade. So he quit teaching. Oh, yes. He quit teaching. That's what I just said. At the age of 30 on the dot, he wanted to be rich by the age of 40. So by 30, when he realized he was not getting any richer, he decided to quit teaching and decided to headlong into the trade of timber. And that was where he started making money. Today we're talking about Komla Akbeli Bedema, a.k.a. Afro Bede. Now, Bedema heard about the UGCC. And he decided to be a member. Remember, he was a man who loved to talk Pan-Africanism. In fact, the timber business was a very lucrative one. And he was introduced to the business by Pa Grant, who himself was a timber merchant and the main financier of the UGCC. So when the UGCC was founded, oh my God, have mercy, he quickly became one of the founding members or one of the early members of the UGCC. Remember the UGCC was founded in 1947 and our hero for today, Komla Akbali Bedema, in fact, went into that trade in 1943. So four years later, the UGCC was founded and he decided to join. Kwame Nkrumah also arrived in the country in 1947 to become the general secretary of the group known as the United Gold Coast Convention, UGCC. Remember, it was Kwame Nkrumah who transformed it from a, a tea party, a party of bourgeoisies, all the way to a full-fledged parties with branches all over Ghana. At that time called the Gold Coast, Kwame Nkrumah had the magic wand. And the way Kwame Nkrumah handled the UGCC, Kwame Akbali was so interested and so mesmerized. So when Nkrumah left, he decided to join him. And in 1948, they also founded the CPP. My brother, my sister, that is the uh, Convention People's Party. In fact, it was founded actually in 1949 after Nkrumah left in 1948. My brother, my sister, this was what happened. Now listen, Kwame Bedema joined Kwame Nkrumah and they founded the CPP together. He was with Kwame Nkrumah when Kwame Nkrumah went to jail. In fact, Kwame Nkrumah was locked up. Remember the 1948 crossroad shootings? Remember the Accra riots? Oh, remember the Osu um, King? We all remember. Yes, the Osu Alatamanche. How many of us remember his name? Ni Kobna Boni. You are right. Ni Kobna Boni, the first. See what happened now. Remember, Nkrumah and five other people were arrested and jailed. And it was at this time, Afro Bede played a very important role in the politics of Kwame Nkrumah and, and the people of the Gold Coast. He was influential in getting Nkrumah elected to the Legislative Council on the 8th day of February in 1951. At the elections for the Legislative Assembly, he organized Nkrumah's entire campaign whilst Nkrumah was still in prison, detained by the colonial government. Nkrumah duly won the Accra Central Municipality seat. This led to Nkrumah being released on the 12th of February in 1951 and he's been invited to form a government. Bedema is in some reports named as being the first to welcome Nkrumah after his release from the Fort James prison. <laughs> Afro Bede, very powerful man. He was able to campaign for a man to win elections when the man himself was behind bars in jail. And when he won, he was asked to come out and he was the one who welcomed him on. My brother, my sister, mark this one. Keep it in your mind. Listen, 
Gadema, who himself got elected into the Legislative Assembly, became the first Ghanaian Minister of Health and Labor in the Nkrumah government. And in 1954, he became the first Minister of Finance, a position he held for seven years. He was very influential in getting an initially reluctant United States government to back the building of the Akosombo Dam. That was one of his achievements. He made sure that the Akosombo Dam Oh my God, was funded by the United States government. He was a very, very eloquent negotiator. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Afro Bede. But my brother, my sister, his relationship with Kwame Nkrumah fell apart. With all these things he did for Nkrumah, he was expecting that when Nkrumah became president, he would become the um, vice president. But when Kwame Nkrumah became president, something interesting happened. And listen to this. Now, it was in the days of Kennedy, J.F. Kennedy. Now, Kennedy was a very good friend of Kwame Nkrumah. And he used to tell Kwame Nkrumah a lot of things. Now, Afro Bede went all the way to America. And in America, he went into a restaurant. And he was kicked out of the restaurant all because he was black. And because of that, he had the privilege to go meet the president of America at that time. In fact, this happened in the United States of America on the 10th day of October in 1957. Ghana had just been born in March. And in October, he was in America negotiating and doing so many different things to get the Akosombo Dam funded by America. It was in the days of the U.S. President Dwight D. Eisenhower. In fact, and he apologized, my brother, my sister, when he went into the Howard Johnson restaurant in Dover, Delaware, to eat, he was kicked out. And when it came out that he was a minister of state of a new country called Ghana, the president of America had to apologize to him. In those days, it was the president called Dwight D. Eisenhower. My brother, my sister, and Dwight Eisenhower was the president of America from 1950. All the way to 1961. My brother, my sister, that was him. Yes, he was the president of America. He apologized to Afro Bede. Now, let us get this thing done. Kennedy liked Kwame Nkrumah so much. Remember, Kennedy himself was the president of America. And when he became president of America, he was assassinated. He was killed. In fact, when Afro Bede realized that Kwame Nkrumah was not going to make him vice president, he was not happy with Kwame Nkrumah. Number two, he also said Kwame Nkrumah was a spendthrift. In other words, Kwame Nkrumah was indisciplined when it came to spending money. Remember, he was the finance minister. And he didn't know. Or oh, better still, he did not understand why Kwame Nkrumah was blowing so much money, doing so many different things in the country. He felt that Kwame Nkrumah should slow down. So he didn't tell Kwame Nkrumah directly. He rather gossiped amongst some people who also sent the information to Kwame Nkrumah. And when Nkrumah heard it, he was angry with Bedema and forced Bedema to resign from his government. Bedema later said Nkrumah was planning to lock him up in the detention without trial. Thin. And he ran away into exile in America. Whilst he was in America, he joined hands with the CIA. Oh my God. Yes, he joined hands with the CIA. My brother, my sister, he joined hands with C the CIA. Remember that this president who apologized to him uh, is in Howard was succeeded by J.F. Kennedy. J.F. Kennedy. Remember, I told you about J.F. Kennedy. J.F. Kennedy was the president of America, my brother, my sister, for only two years and was assassinated. Now, he was a good friend of Kwame Nkrumah. He was the one who was calling Kwame Nkrumah to tell him, listen, your former minister who is in exile, be very careful. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Be very, very careful. Yes. Be very, very careful with him. You know why you should be careful? Do you know why you should be careful? My brother, my sister, 
Hey, interesting things are happening. And I hope you students will be able to, I mean, pick up this very, very fast. He was president of America from 1953. My brother, my sister, and we are talking about uh, J.F. Kennedy. He was the one who was assassinated. Listen attentively. <laughs> J.F. Kennedy was the youngest person to assume the presidency by election and the youngest president at the end of his tenure. We're talking about J.F. Kennedy. My brother, my sister, J.F. Kennedy, oh my God, have mercy, mm -mm -mm -mm. was assassinated at the age of six, 46. Yes, 46. That was when he was assassinated. Yeah. J.F. Kennedy will remain one of the best presidents of America. In fact, he was a man who loved Kwame Nkrumah and he used to tell Kwame Nkrumah, listen, be careful. This former minister of yours is engaged in so much controversy with the CIA and they are plotting against you. But Kwame Nkrumah kept it under tones, and he didn't go so much into it. And Kwame Nkrumah paid a bitter lesson. Whilst um, he paid a bitter price for that, whilst Afro Bede was in the U.S., oh, he was able to machinate and get some people like Harley, like Deku, and Kwashi. These were the people he was able to get, including Kotoka, to stake that coup in collaboration with the CIA and Nkrumah was finally released or removed in 1966. Afro Bede was part of the machinators of that coup. So Kennedy was right. Yes, Kennedy was very, very right. Mm -mm -mm -mm. My brother, my sister, this is the African history class. And today we're talking about Afro Bede when he fell out with Kwame Nkrumah. Oh my God. There was no way he was going to come together with Kwame Nkrumah again. My brother, my sister, when Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas at exactly 12.30 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time, my brother, my sister, on Friday, November 22, 1963, Nkrumah heard it and Nkrumah cried a lot. He loved Kwame Nkrumah and he loved the people of Ghana. And he gave vital information to Kwame Nkrumah. Maybe the CIA realized that he was giving too much information and they did not want it. But he stands as one of the best presidents of America, one of the youngest, the youngest at the time of his death. There's a whole airport that is named after him. Afro Bede, my brother, my sister, when he heard Kwame Nkrumah had been overthrown, oh, he was so joyful, so joyous. Oh, he was happy to hear that. My brother, my sister, he later came back into the country trying to get some other positions. But, my brother, my sister, none of them worked. Afro Bede, my brother, my sister, fell ill and died on the 11th day of July in 1998. His biggest positions were those Nkrumah gave to him. He was one of those who fought for the independence of this country because of a very simple disagreement between him and Kwame Nkrumah. Oh my God, it became very disastrous. And the first president of this country was overthrown. He was part of the machinations. Today we remember him. Yes, some mistakes were made here and there, but we still remember him as one of our heroes of this country. Yes, at the end of the day, he became an enemy to the government. And I believe that before he died, he realized that. Today we remember you. Baba now, Baba now, Ow Kwala Agbele Gedema, Baba now, Baba now, Baba, 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 Baba now, Ow Baba, 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 Baba now, Baba now, Baba now. Baba now. Uni nyaminko. Uni nyaminko wate. Uni nyaminko. Uni nyaminko. 
He died. My brother, my sister, on the 11th day of July in 1988. And he died at the age of 85. May his body, mind, and soul rest in perfect peace. As we remember him today and in the burden of knowledge, we ask you. Now that you know what we do do. Be an any or lay a mini or bafe. Yen zoom the kagane me zaka yini. Yen papango bukaye nun. Fifi aye nya. Nukai na wo. Bana eh. Ebeden. Bana eh. Ebe ya bade. Lele and jiman singa be kone. Lele and jiman singa beri. It's been the African history class. And I ask you in the burden of knowledge. How will the life story of Komla Agbeli Bedema, a.k.a. Afro Bede, impact your own life in present contemporary times? <laughs>